You too can have teeth like mine if you use the new Funky Farmer toothbrush. Or maybe not. Right, so I've got a bit of a window of opportunity where I, do you know what, look, can you see the clouds behind? My weather app from the Met Office said it was gonna to rain today. Let me just, let me just lean against the chain arrows. Leaning, 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 wobbly, wobbly. Right, I, I thought I might move for some round bales today and then the um, weather app told me it was gonna rain and it's not rained yet. And do you know what's really frustrating? One minute it's saying 80% chance of rain, then the next drop out of 40. So it's quite unsettled this week. So I'm not sure when I'm gonna get the bales done. My brother's on holiday so I'm on my own so I've got a few hours in between milking and stuff where I either go mowing or I do some other job so today is some other job um, and maybe over this week I can actually get a couple of coats of paint on the old chain arrows so let me you might remember uh, ooh, about a month ago maybe um, I bought a set of chain arrows at a sale here we go there's a little little clip of Harry filming he didn't actually get me he got the auctioneer but Harry filming me bidding on the chain arrows Got, turn a pound, 220, 250, 280, at 280 bid, 300, 320, at 320 bid, 320 order, and 320, 350, at 360, 360, 370, 380, 380, 90, 400, at 410, at 410 bid, at 410, 420, 430, both out here, 440, we live 440, 450, 450, 460, 470, 470, 80, 480 bid, at 480, done this time, 480, 90, 490, 500, 500 bid at 500 pound ice, San Amigo then 10, 510 at 510, stick with them sir, 520, 520 bid at 520 ice, San Amigo then at 520, they go to the funky farmer at 520, do you have a number right. funky farmer? So that, so that was then, this is now, I've got them back here, they're pretty tidy, they're good enough for what I need, they just need a little bit of work, There's, I think there's one link that needs fixing, uh, the whole point of me getting these second-hand chain arrows was to replace another set, which I've actually sold. I've sold to someone. I won't say for how much, but basically the, between the selling price and this, there's not a lot in it. So I basically upgraded our chain arrows for not a lot of money. But they need a little bit of work, like I said, a bit of linkage fitting, but also... Um, also need a bit of rubbing down. I got a bit of paint. Now, I, so I'm going to rub that down. I'm not going to spend ages on it because actually, do you know what? They're not very rusty. That was the whole point of me buying. They're quite solid. Um, but I've got some lovely paint. I've got some pylon paint. Uh, we're going to have a look at that. I'll tell you what. I'll just rub a little bit off here. Then we're going to get the pylon paint. And I'll tell you about the pylon paint because it's the best paint you can get. Partly because it's free, but I'll also show you what it's like. Tracking on. All right, so we're going to look, have a just a little walk around. Look, that's just algae on there, I think. So you can see the red oxide underneath. So, so you can see the, the steel is really solid. That's the difference between our old one and this one. The steel is really solid. The, the links are good on the chain. Um, I mean, coming around here, that is, it's all really solid. I'm really pleased about it. There's a bit of rest there, look. The um, so where is there a broken link? There's one somewhere. I saw it. Uh, where are we? Oh, here we are. There's someone done a farmer fix there. Look, that's that's not right there. So I'm gonna have to, someone's done a podge on that. I'm gonna have to sort that out. Look, look, look. wired it up. But that's only one bit. I mean, I can, I can probably just weld that one piece or something. The rest of the, the links are all really good. I haven't found anything else broken. So it's literally just this one bit in the corner, which that's just nothing, is it? That's nothing to worry about. The steel work is all really good. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'm just gonna basically rub a little bit off. Oh, text message. Rub a little bit off, and then I'm gonna put some paint on it. Difference is, this is the original blue paint. It's not gonna be blue. It's gonna be a battleship gray when I finish, but who cares? Right, let's go and get, uh, let's, let's just rub a little bit more off and then I'll go and get the paint. You 
just getting the loose rust off. I'm not, it's not very bad. Look, there's a bit of muck camping over that. Just the, just the odd bit. There's my lot number that, 68, lot 68. Hmm. Right, I'm just going to drop it down so I can do a bit on the top. Right, let's have a look. So these are slightly wider than the set we've got. And um, the only thing I didn't realize is they're not split in sections, the one we've got. So at some point I'm gonna have to replace this. This, this is still second hand, so at some point I have to put a new bed of chains in. It's all one complete bed, rather than our old one is one section there, one section there, one section there. Uh, I don't think that really matters that much, but uh, that's how it's done. So, um, yeah, so I've just got to clean off these bits here. I said that bit's broken, but I've got to fix that. There's going to be a wide, wide, much wider chain areas than what I've got, the old one. So that's good. Looks to me like, though, that those links want adjusting, pulling. Maybe I think these chains want adjusting at some point. Don't think they need to be as long as that, do they? And how easy those have come undone. Probably stretched over time. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, these shackles. They probably want those bolts taken off, and they want like a link taken out on each one. Oh well, another job for me. Although they might not be too. I mean, I. They'll work like that anyway. Right, let's just get a bit more paint off or rust off. And it's still pretty good, really. I mean, I wonder whether they were stored inside. Because they're not that rusty, really. I know they might look it on here, but this, you know, the paint's still underneath there. Our old ones have been outside for 40 years. how much I'll get done today. As usual, I'm, I'm up against it. I've got other stuff to do. I, I had a phone call earlier with one of my mates chatting on the phone for about an hour when I was supposed to be doing this. So I'm a bit behind. scrub a dub dub Three men in a tub. scrub a dub dub If you've gone a bit thinner there, you can see the steels. It's probably where the moisture gets trapped in there against it. Right, I think that's good enough on here. Um, I'm just going to get my paint. It's not going to be a pucker paint job, it's going to be a farmer paint job. I've, I've prepped it enough for, for what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to get the paint. We'll have a look at what I've got. My special paintings.
Right, let's have a look what we got here. Let's move these tools. So, I have got here five cans of pylon paint. Now, you might wonder what I mean by pylon paint. So, basically every, I don't know, 15 odd years maybe, they come round and they paint all the uh, electricity pylons around the farm. In fact, I have got a bit of video of them doing it. Let me just show you a little bit of this clip. Well, I've come out um, into the field where the electric pylons are and um, there's some blokes up there who are actually painting the pylons today. It's interesting that they, um, they come back and paint these pylons about every 15 years. Um, these, these pylons I think are about 40 years old. Um, and maybe a bit older than that actually, probably 45 years old. Uh, and they got, used to supply electric from Oldbury and Bartley nuclear power station, but I'm not sure what they're doing with them now, because those uh, nuclear power stations have been decommissioned. Um, but they had to turn the electric off for these pylons. And if you can see, they're just working up there. There's one bloke there. Climbing right up. And then there's another guy up further there. And a bloke above him. And what they do is they rub them down and then they put a yellow top coat on. That guy's put in the grey, oh, sorry, yellow undercoat and then a grey top coat. So there you go. So what they do is they paint the pylons and it's sort of really, really good anti-corrosive paint. It's like a hammerite, but an expensive one, not more than the normal stuff you buy in the shops. Um, and usually when they come around, I usually say to them, Oi mate, can I have a few cans of paint? I mean, I've, they've, they've been twice in my lifetime. Um, I can't remember the last time they came. It's quite a while ago. And in fact, I've just got the tins here. So this is, this is the undercoat. It's like a yellow vinyl i think i've only got one can of that um an expiry date we can't see it on there let's have a look these are top coat the gray the battleship gray let me have a look oh that's heavy there we go tower paint stokes's power tower paint vinyl manufactured june 2013 expiry june 2014 must not be thinned okay so i've got four cans of that so Ideally what you do is you put the orangey top coat on, uh, undercoat on, this one, so you can really just see where you've been. Uh, I've got about half a can of that, so I'm going to put some of that on, I think. Won't do any harm. And use that up, and then I'm going to just do grey top coat. The only issue I've got is that, as you can see, the tins are well out of date, so I have no idea whether they turn to concrete in the cans. They probably need a hell of a lot of stirring. But this is brilliant paint, and the thing is, if you know anything about paint, you'll realise how expensive it is. If I had to buy a couple of cans like that, you're probably talking 50 quid or something. So, me painting this would cost me a lot of money. As it stands, it won't cost me anything. Uh, right, this is the last of the pylon paint. You can spot it around the farm, look. Can you see here on these trusses? These were done 20 odd years ago. They probably could do with another coat now, look. I did those. All the way up there. Pylon paint. Even on that... Um, Post there, pylon paint. And the undercoat, hard to remember now, the undercoat on Farmer P's pylon paint. In fact, let's go and have a look. Farmer P's trailer. There we go, look. Pylon paint. Lovely stuff it is. You can see it under there, the grey. The yellow's not pylon paint. Obviously, that's bought from off the internet, but um, pylon paint. Love pylon paint. Basically, I love any free stuff. But pylon paint is good, really good. They, I don't know when they'll next come round to, uh, to, to um, paint them, but hopefully I can get some more. All right, so let's have a look. I'm gonna zoom down a bit. Let's have a look at what this is like. So the last time this tin was opened was when I did Farmer P's trailer, and that was probably five years ago or something. And as usual, oh, it is coming off. Oh, there's a skim on the top. Can you see that? Mm. 
Yeah. Should have put my gloves on really, shouldn't I? Okay. You can usually tell my boiler suits from the various jobs I've done, and now this one is scarred with pylon paint. Look got a bit on the floor this stuff has gone really thick it's probably it says no thinning on the tins but really that's a bit thick the interesting thing is um, there is nothing interesting what was I gonna say I was gonna say it just looks like diarrhea doesn't it diarrhea color luckily it's not top coat right I'm gonna have to go and get a brush what time is it 26 pounds hmm I'm gonna um I think I'm gonna leave this till tomorrow actually. You know, do you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna leave this till tomorrow because if I start this now, I haven't got much time till lunch and then I've got to get the cows in for milking and I'll only do half a job. So, and then I'll get all my, because once you've done this, so I'm putting the lid back on. Once I've done this, realistically, I have to throw the brush away. Okay, well I'll go and get a brush ready anyway, and then I'll have this good to go. I think, so a couple of hours in the morning putting primer on, leave it to dry, and then top coat. The boys aren't around today, but I think this is a good job for the boys. I can get them doing some of the top coat. What could possibly go wrong there with two boys, or my two boys, with some paint, with a paintbrush? Stay tuned. Oh, go on then, let's just put a little bit on. I can't resist it. So I've got my manky paintbrush. Look, I, what generally I normally do is I have a two-tier paintbrush system. Being tight farmer, I never throw anything away. So I have the good paintbrushes for the farmhouse, and then when they get past it for the farmhouse, where you need to get a good finish, I get I keep them for the farm because realistically, it doesn't really matter if you get brushes bristles in that frame, does it? Or it it doesn't, you know, look great. It's just practical. So I've used the old farmhouse paintbrushes for this. And look, you can see where I've done Farmer Peace trailer on it. Like, Christ, that Christ, this brush must be ancient. Didn't realize I kept it that long. Normally I throw everything away. Right, let's get a little bit on. Let's get a dab off this lump here. Anyway, before I, because I put the lid on. Look. Oh, that makes you feel better already. Look at that. Mm. Well, that, I think that might do as a sample because it didn't even take long to me to do this, is it? <sighs> look at that, the blooming sun's coming out now. Look, flipping sunny. Look at that. Oh, just I should have mown that grass today, shouldn't I? I don't know why I listen to weather forecast. <sighs> right. Okay, onwards and upwards. So, stay tuned for the next episode. I'll be putting primer on, maybe with the boys, or maybe with, I'll be mowing. I don't know. Ah! Right, we'll get this painted by the end of the week anyway. Crack on.